Hello, everyone. Welcome to Generative Energy number 77 Q&A with me, Danny Roddy. And what a year it's been. I know we kind of talked about this on the last live stream with Ray, which I thought was really great. You know, I'm always happy when we get to navigate to new territories with Ray. And so just asking him about uh, home stuff and grounding and things I've never uh, it's not that we haven't talked about that stuff. Like I, Ray talked about grounding a person's bed years ago, you know, like more than five years ago. But I like, uh, I don't think we've ever talked about that on the the stream. So that was very fun. And, and him saying the things about his predictions for 2022 was pretty scary. Uh, but also enlightening in terms of kind of preparing for things. And so, okay, so we have a bunch of questions and, and what, uh, okay, my mission statement for these solo streams. So uh, if something good comes out of listening to this hour, hour and a half, it's hopefully shedding a light on underutilized resources, inspiring people to create their own resources, such as uh, Evernote, Notion, or Roam. And so this is my uh, Evernote here. And I've been, I think I've been making notes in this thing for probably more than 10 years or close to 10 years. And so if you click on these things, uh, it will just show the papers. So I, I put the abstract right here, and then I'll put the full paper right here that I'll usually grab on Sci-Hub or something like that. But, uh, and then this is a good, good example. So it's like carbon dioxide or something. I'll, I'll, I'll tag it up here as, oh, you can you guys, you can't see this. <laughs> Let me make this a little bit smaller. Um, okay, now you can see it. Okay, so I'll tag it up here. And so that way, if I want to do um, uh, estrogen and notes that I deem as excellent, I can click here and all the notes will come up that fit that criteria. Anyways, I'm trying to say like having notes in this territory can be very useful because this stuff is very confusing. And so if a person is trying to wing all the information that they understand, it's going to probably end very poorly. And so I'm also not saying that everybody has to be like a start collecting abstracts or anything, but this started small and then got crazy, you know? And so, uh, but I can't, I don't know where I'd be without it. It's been just so incredibly useful. Um, okay. So let's, I'm hearing like an echo, which is weird because I'm not using headphones. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully the audio is okay. Okay. So let's move on. Um, inspiring people to experiment. So Bucky Fuller said, uh, every time man makes a new experiment, he always learns more. He cannot learn less. And experiences for me, the highest authority, the touchstone of validity is my own experience, says Carl Rogers. And now they're Bucky Fuller. He says, I'm not a genius. I'm just a tremendous bundle of experience. And then Abraham Maslow said, you'll either step forward into growth or you'll step back uh, backward into safety. And so I get like an over, because we've started talking a lot about prepping stuff. Um, I, I do get a like, huge amount of questions about what I'm doing. Not that anybody should follow suit. Uh, but I am worried about the future because I don't intend on getting any vaccine. And so I think my life or the people that do not get a vaccine, their life will be made very difficult. And so that's what I'm thinking about. Like if a person just acquiesces to everything that's going on, I still think things will be bad for them, but uh, it might not be as difficult. So uh, it's, so again, this was taken like three weeks ago. So this, uh, my shelves actually look considerably different now, but stocking up on sugar, uh, like toxic free napkins, you know, uh, uh, oysters here. These are gloves that I sharpen knives with. These are kind of plastic ba uh, uh, trash bags that don't smell terrible. Morton's canning salt. These are uh, coffee socks for uh, coffee, obviously. These are Berkey filters over here. Vinegar to clean the distiller. These are more oysters, uh, baking soda, etc. And this is like when I first moved in this kitchen. The kitchen isn't like amazing, but the, if you look out this window, it's just gorgeous. And so... That's like one of the greatest parts about living where I am is you look out the window and it looks like a painting. It's so beautiful. So this is a distiller I had. It's like a mega home distiller. And this is a Berkey, so double redundancy. And then about tomorrow, I'm going to go pick up another, kind of went overboard. <laughs> and I pick up another distiller, a CT Classic water distiller. Um, and it's crazy. And I don't drink water. You know, I, I use it for various things like... Uh, but like for coffee and oxtail and lamb shank and things. But um, the, the, the other reason, so, I, so again, I'm not just preparing for a future that I don't know if it exists or not. This place has the, the well water that we use has high levels of uh, um, fluoride and arsenic. And so these have 
function other than thinking about a rough future. Like uh, I'd, I'd like to have triple redundancy of water when the water here is full of arsenic and full of fluoride. And so, so those are just some of the things I'm doing. And here you can see my messy, oh no, these are clean. So there's a vision pot over there. I use Pyrex glass for a lot of things, but it's harder to find in Mexico. And yeah, and this looks way different now. Um, these are old photos. So anything else? Um, I think that's about it. Okay, subscribe to t.me slash Danny Roddy. I think that is the best place to follow the show and all the content I make currently. And, uh, and guys, thank you so much. Sincerely appreciate it. We have an amazing listenership, and I just really appreciate you guys. This show is like a underground success. So I think a lot of people watch it, you know, or, or listen to it. And uh, people this year specifically were saying they were like, oh, big fans of the podcast. And that's like, just, that's like weird to me because I, I just, I don't, I don't think of it like that. It's just like something Georgie and I do or Ray and Georgie and I do. And I'm just like amazed that it goes semi successful, you know, and the, the, some of the early episodes were really rough. And so uh, again, the fact that I'm like excited to do the episodes these days is quite, quite an amazing thing. Okay. So let's, uh, let's take a small milk break here. So just give me a second guys. And I'm back. <clears throat> okay. Do you find certain foods to be more beneficial eaten at certain times of the day? I found eggs to be much more beneficial in the evening before bed. I've done that before, but it can cause low blood sugar symptoms for me. So I might like wake up in the middle of the night with a racing heart or, or something like that, because I think Ray is right about the insulinogenic nature of eggs. And so maybe if uh, this person is using lots of carbohydrate with the eggs that be, could be okay. But um, yeah, I usually eat eggs in the morning or afternoon. And uh, okay, if I eat the carrot salad too close to bedtime, it will ruin my sleep. And so I try to eat the, so again, I'm not saying anybody should do this, but I try to eat more protein and carbohydrate in the morning and afternoon and less protein in the evening and more fat and carbohydrate. And so I, that seems like it works pretty well for me. Okay. Uh, hey, Danny, do you currently find uh, creating any type of art, stimulating painting, sculpting, music, etc.? So this is embarrassing. I think I said like multiple Q&As ago that I always noodle around on a guitar and I needed to buy one and I still haven't bought one yet. Uh, I've been here for over over a year. And so it just hasn't been on my to-do list, but I need to do that. that that's really the only type of kind of... Uh, the one thing I, one thing I'm finding is like um, doing some house project because there's lots to lots to do here is a nice way of breaking up my schedule. And it's not like replying to email or talking to people or just like noodling around on the internet. And so like a fixed or a fixed project or something, th those are fun to do. Um, but no, I need to get a guitar stat and I haven't, I do like to draw or I used to when I was younger and I probably still have that ability, but I don't exercise it at all. And in high school, I sculpted clay and stuff, but I haven't done that for a long time. So to answer your question, I just need to get a guitar stat as soon as possible. Okay. What is the best natural hair growth story you have seen from someone with male pattern baldness? Um, probably last year, maybe four or five months ago, somebody had sent me before and afters of, they were young, they were like 22 or so. And, and he had regrown a substantial amount of his hairline with just uh, eating liver taking T3 <laughs> and he was a very like dedicated person. So, so I thought that was pretty amazing. And um, yeah, so th th but that was the one that stands out in my mind the most uh, last year. Okay. Uh, is caffeine dehydrating? I don't think so, but it can lower the blood sugar. So that could probably feel like dehydration. Um, when combining macros, is there a scenario where only carbs is okay? I.e. a glass of OJ or a piece of fruit eaten alone. Ideal to have all three uh, macros every time you eat, however big or small. Um, I, th I think this depends on the person's like liver function. And so there's a book by uh, Broda Barnes. And he says, uh, this, let, me, let me make this so you guys can see it. Okay. He says, since a sluggish liver is the most common cause of hypoglycemia, it should follow that a hypothyroid patient is highly susceptible to low blood sugar. And so I think fat can have kind of fill in for a underfunctioning liver and slow the absorption of things down. And so I talk to a lot of people that are like uh, 
I'll never give up starch. Like I, I have such a powerful craving for it. And I think when adding like butter or coconut oil to a potato or something, I think it absorbs very slowly. And sometimes these people like have issues with uh, like sugars and things like that. And so again, I suspect sometimes that those people have sluggish liver function from hypothyroidism. And so um, there's another, oh man. Um, There was a paper that said uh, like liver malfunction might be this one. I can't find it. Okay, whatever. Anyways, it was saying like uh, low thyroid was basically like pseudo liver disease. It was what the the paper basically exactly said. Uh, Liver thyroid. Not liver enzymes. Okay, whatever. I don't take a year to find this. Um, So anyways, getting your thyroid function up as estimated by your pulse and temperature. Those are good proxies for the thyroid function. And that might allow a person to be more uh, liberal with like just eating carbohydrate on its own and not having to eat protein, carbohydrate, and fat with it. But for somebody that's kind of compromised, eating protein, carbohydrate, and fat at every meal, it could be therapeutic for them. Okay, my buddy Spencer, he says, when you were drinking store-bought orange juice, did it just upset your stomach or did it also mess with your general well-being? I think both. I think when my stomach felt really inflated, that just made me feel uncomfortable like 24 seven. And like, I I doubt that had like a pro mood effect. (laughs) Um, But I, this was back in like 2014, 15. And I think I was just, I I think I was confused for a while at what was going on with me. I didn't understand what was happening. So it took me a really long time to figure out that the orange juice was causing me problems like way, way too long. Um, And so yeah, yeah, I, I'm a bit, big advocate for not drinking sour or tart orange juice, which is most orange juice brands. Okay, hey, Danny, I have a uh, strong desire to either bite my nails or pick at the skin around my fingers. I really want to stop, but I haven't been successful for many years now. Things like antibiotics, charcoal, and GABA, promoting things like tannin, uh, haven't been able to help. Do you have advice on how long, uh, how I can stop this OCD-adjacent behavior? Thank you very much. Um so I've, I've never read any papers on this, but for my whole life, I chewed and bit my nails and my, like p- people used to joke that it looked like a dog had attacked my fingernails. And, um, so again, I'm just spitballing here, but like strange behaviors like that can, or, or like, uh, stress related behaviors, I think can sometimes be related to higher adrenaline or higher cortisol. And so maybe I'd ask this person more questions about their pulse and their temperature and, like the cortisol, the cortisol is always going to be higher. I think when the thyroid function is low because the liver can't store sugar. So you're going to chronically have to rely on cortisol to, to produce sugar. And so, um, and then I asked this person how their digestion was as well. So, but yeah, just exploring the ultra basic things to, to see what was wrong. Okay. What do you use to keep from stinking? Ray says soap is estrogenic. I have now tried a solid week of just rinsing in the shower and stunk too much to not start using soap again. I think some soaps are okay though. Um, like, uh, oh, I can't get into my Instagram. Anyways, like Dua Dua soap. So, so I think this is okay. And you can probably purchase it in iHerb and iHerb ships around the world. Um, I use baking soda cause it's really super easy. But uh, this soap is okay. I think he's Ray's talking about like industrial soaps with uh, sodium laurel sulfate and all these those weird things it has in it. Uh, okay. You mentioned it takes a few hours to get from your new house to the city to buy groceries. That doesn't sound ideal. So, so how do you manage that? <laughs> At first, it was really annoying, and it's becoming less annoying every single time I do it. Uh, so I had money to spend on an ATV. But like uh, getting an ATV is actually extremely confusing here and they require a bunch of information that I don't even have. And so I was like, okay, well, I'll buy buy used one. And that's even more scary because I have no idea what I'm doing and I couldn't evaluate like the quality of an ATV. And so I'm only going to town like twice a week and it's, it's not, it's not, it's becoming less of a pain in the ass every time I do it. 
Um, the, the worst part is waiting for a cab. And so I'm just at the mercy of whatever cab goes by this street. And a lot of times people are in the cabs. And like today it took me, I, I must have been waiting for a cab for like 30 minutes or so. And that was not like a fun thing to do to wait in the sun. But it could be a lot worse. So so anyways, it's just a, it's just a trade-off. It's a compromise for living here, which I love. And so... I can't, I can't really complain about it because I live closer to these places in worse places, like, uh, like closer to the food, but in a place that I liked a lot less. And so I, I just love this place. So I'm happy as a clam. Um, okay. Also, if a person has gotten to the point of having a good metabolism and generally feels pretty great, what do you think is worth focusing on in life? Discovering, learning, social, uh, socializing, relaxing movement. Um, then I think that's always up to the person of what they, f- like Ray has some quote is like, whatever you think needs more um, light shed on it, you know, is like, that's what you should be doing. So naturally the hair loss stuff was always interesting to me, but it's blossomed into much bigger things. I feel like so like this hair loss, just being a side effect of like a uh, under functioning metabolism. And then the environment having a, a, ne- a highly negative effect on a person's metabolism and that getting into culture and all these things being related to each other. And so, um, that, and, and, and again, it just like drew me and diff- pulled me in different directions over time. And so, so again, these things are real pers- really personal. And so it just, I think it just depends on the person's specific interest, but good, great question. Okay. Um, Hey Danny, I'm curious as to where your latest thoughts on the purpose of hair. Have you revisited Ray's comment in one of your podcasts where he said the frontal lobes of the brain need to be cooler than the rest of the body and the brain and uh, requiring progesterone to stabilize the process. I have done uh, zero additional investigation on this topic. I honestly think the last time I seriously looked into this was um, on my website, like in, maybe in 2018. That was, that was the article. Very slow internet. Okay, yeah, May 9th, 2018. <laughs> but this article, I perused it not too long ago. I thought it was still good. Um, but uh, yeah, the the thing that I think would reignite my interest in this subject is if a new paper came out talking about the brain and hair loss. Uh, oh, and you know, I made a, a video maybe in 2019 uh, about that article or whatever. But I, but I haven't. So it's something new coming out would probably reignite my interest in it. Uh, but I, I just haven't. I've been focused on other things for a, a little while now. Um, it's not to say it's not interesting. Okay, I have a low body temp and a resting pulse around 60 upon waking. I tried to introduce Sinomel, uh, but it, even using only a quarter of a tablet made my heart race at night and gave me horrible insomnia. Insomnia is a familiar issue, but this really aggravated things. Body temp and pulse did go up slightly, but my well-being did not improve. What could be underlying cause for this? So the easy, to easiest is that one, what you say, one-fourth quarter of a tablet. One-fourth one of a tablet is probably way too much. So that'd be 6.25 micrograms. Um, and so especially if, if a person has had high adrenaline for a long time, they might want to start with like one microgram. And so that, so a entire uh, tablet, let me move this. So an entire tablet of Sinomel in milligrams on a scale is 100, milli, uh, 100 milligrams. <laughs> so 25 micrograms of T3 on a scale uh, of the pill weight is 100 milligrams. And so if you need, if you wanted, uh, tw- uh, one microgram, I think you divide by 25 and that would be four milligrams on a scale. <laughs> and that is a tiny, tiny speck of a Sinomel tablet. Uh, and so obviously I think it's useful to get a milligram scale when using a uh, Sinomel and Sinoplus. And I used to kind of be like, oh yeah, you could get one if you want. And I, I think a person's likely to go wrong, like uh, have a bad experience possibly if they don't get a scale. And a scale is like $15. Um, you could buy it wherever you want. But just getting a jewelry milligram scale for these things, especially if you need a small dose, because uh, even cutting those pills, like say you think you cut a fourth and you get a third, like uh, just the, the angle of how the pill is cut, like measuring the, the cuts, uh, per, like at least I was shocked how inaccurate eyeballing it was. And so uh, I would recommend getting a scale and 6.25 might be way too much for this person and maybe trying 
one microgram, which on a scale of, a, of the tablet of the pill is four milligrams. Um, and then the other thing is to always use thyroid with food. So this could possibly happen just by taking it uh, alone. Okay. Uh, can you eat fat and sugar at the same time? What about combining protein and sugar? Will those combinations cause advanced glycation? Um, I don't think so. I think you can eat all those things together. And for what it's worth uh, on YouTube, uh, ages. We talk about ages uh, kind of like sl slightly in depth. Uh, on this specific one, um, it involves the synthesis of like D-lactate, which can be turned into methylglyoxal, which is like the precursor for the advanced glycation end products, and 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 also glycerol from um, glycerol from triglycerides. So a triglyceride is three free fatty acids with a gl glycerol, and so when they're broken down and liberated into the bloodstream, the glycerol can be used by the liver to I think make methylglyoxal. And that is the thing that increases the advanced glycation end products um, in addition to the D-lactate. D and so this is another one of those bogus low-carb arguments, uh, like avoiding stress and the liberation of fat would be a good way to lower advanced glycation end products. Um, and uh, isn't there uh, Atkins? Yeah. This is like a... Atkins diet increases methylglyoxal in ages. Uh, the degree of tissue damage is likely to depend on the amount of time a person is on the diet because the high methylglyoxal levels lead to the creation of chemically irreversible advanced glycation end products. And fat liberation is a fundamental... There seems to be little doubt that there are signals for an increased mobilization of fat and shock trauma and sepsis and to suggest that the enhanced mobilization and oxidation of fat is one of the fundamental responses to stress. Okay. Um, about to start T3, what cofactors are required to ensure I respond well to supplements and nutrition? Um, so when it depends on the, th the thyroid product, I think all th thyroid products aren't really created equal. And then going back to what we talked about with the, the um, being sure of the dose that a person is taking, measuring it. And um, I don't think like maybe I'm guilty of pro like progressing this information, but I don't think you need... Like uh, when you take thyroid, like you need an uh, immediate amount of nutrition. Like that's a, that's a possibility, but also taking thyroid should make a, a person more resistant to nutritional deficiencies. I think it goes both ways because for example, like high estrogen, I think in waste B vitamins, uh, waste magnesium, uh, waste sodium, waste everything. And so like the stress state is like an inefficient state where a person is not able to hang on to a lot of things and like destroying vitamin A and things. Um, so getting the thyroid up, I think will relax the whole system and help a person become more nutritionally replete. And so, but again, uh, both things should be worked on because I, I do talk to a lot of people that will like only take thyroid and start having issues at a certain point, but they'll never eat liver or never eat oysters. And then some people that will eat liver and oysters, but will never take thyroid. And again, I'm not saying, oh, if they only did what I said, they'd be fine. But there are just people, everybody you talk to wants to do some things, doesn't want to do other things. And it's not my place to tell them what, what they should do. And then a lot of times after talking for a while, they do come to the conclusion that they should do this or that, or try this or that. So that's just, this is a part of talking to different people at different starting places. Um, but again, just a few micrograms of T3, a person might just stand to benefit and doesn't need like to eat liver the next hour after they take the T3. Not, say, not saying that David is saying that. Um, okay. Hi, I'm being nosy, but I just adore Ray so much and am indebted to him uh, for my life. With that, can you describe your relationship with him? I see him as a father. I'm sure you do as well, but can you tell us a bit more about his personhood and your relationship to you? Uh, <laughs> that's a really hard question to answer. I definitely do not look at him like a father um, or a friend. It's like more of a, t like a teacher type of relationship. So he's like the best teacher I've ever had. That's not to say like we don't joke around or whatever before a live stream or he doesn't give me like profound advice on things. Um, 
sometimes when I think I'm crazy, I'll bounce ideas off of him and he'll like reassure me, you know, he's very validating. That's like one of his absolute best qualities, I think. But yeah, definitely not a father, definitely not like a, fr a friend, uh, d just like a profoundly well, teacher with lots of wisdom that he can just like mine away at his wisdom and try to think about it and use it in your own life, you know. Um, the one thing is, I think our relationship did change after we did the, um, uh, let me, Dean Rahi. So we did a podcast a long time ago. Why is this so big? Uh, it was this one. It was the CIA's Mighty Wurlitzer. So this was 2017. And I honestly believe this was like the first time. I think I was just so nervous before about talking about nutrition and thought like I had to know everything. And uh, like uh, it was just like a weird dynamic. And and then when we we talked about the CIA, I was just like the fool. I, I was that, and that's my good place. It's just being like, okay, I have no clue what's going on here. What, what is actually happening? Right. And then we just talked the whole time. And I think at the end, he's like, good talking to you. And he like never had said that before. <laughs> so, so, so again, and this was my foray into like, not just talking about thyroid or not just talking about hair loss. And I thought it was, it was like a really fun episode to do. And I really enjoyed it. And, 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 and I think we laughed a few, like I, I have a tendency to laugh at kind of fucked up stuff. Like, uh, I think that's just maybe my coping mechanism. <laughs> and, uh, I think we laughed a few times at like ruling class, uh, stories about all the messed up stuff they do. Um, but yeah, that's a good listen if a person hasn't listened to it. Uh, okay. Uh, hi Danny. What do you think? I uh, what do you think about getting vertical ridges on the nails? Is it low thyroid? I had always heard it was related to like the liver, but as we talked about earlier, the liver related to the functioning of the liver, uh, <laughs> the thyroid related to the functioning of the liver. Um, I don't have any references to pull up about this, but I had always heard the same thing. Okay. This is a personal question and you don't have to answer if uncomfortable. Why don't you want a waifu to love and to hold? What better person to give you hugs and kiss your cheek other than grandma? <laughs> My life has been about like chasing growth for a long time. Uh, and so the fact that it's not about that, that this moment is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, again, like I said, I think life is going to get very hard. That doesn't mean I couldn't meet somebody in the process, but meeting a person that's not vaccinated. Uh, again, I'm not saying that would be a requirement, but like a, some kind of long-term thing that would be a, ideal. Um, but maybe it won't play out that way. But um, I, th one of the reasons I'd always go to Asia was I never would meet anybody in Mexico. So that I knew that was going to happen when I came back from Thailand, you know? And so that's just kind of a quality here. And if it happens, it happens, but that's not a major priority in my life right now. And um, yeah, I'm uh, okay with how things are. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it would be great. I hope it hope it happens. Fingers crossed. But uh, and I'll make it happen if I see an opportunity. But uh, right now, life is that's not my highest priority. Um, okay, what are typical signs of taking too much NDT that one should look for? The thing that always happened to me was like breathlessness, and so I'd kind of start losing my breath, especially if I uh, got into like a semi slight emotional kind of reaction. And so, for example. Even something as trivial as like going outside and my neighbor saying like, oh, hey, Danny, like, let's talk. And I'd be like excited to talk to him and I'd start like losing my breath. And 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 I specifically think it was the T4 in the Sinoplus that would do that. Like it seemed, it seemed like that generally would not happen if I took too much T3. But the T4, for whatever reason, I think can have kind of an anti-metabolic effect and cause breathlessness. And also maybe loose stools and things, um, insomnia, uh, those are the main things. Thoughts on topical T3 versus oral. Um, the only benefit of topical T3 would be like trying to solve some local problem. Uh, so I don't know. They're not even remotely the same. Like if if 10% uh, or even 5% of the thyroid is applied to the skin, like to get a to get 10 micrograms, you'd have to apply a hundred micrograms to your skin. That would not be economical. Uh, especially if you did that every day, multiple times per day. They, I mean, that'd be crazy. So yeah, I guess for specific skin related problems uh, or pathologies, like using topical T3, 
but not as a replacement for oral. Like thyroid, in my estimation, should always be used orally. Okay, let's do a, a milk, milk break here, guys. <laughs> Okay. Guys, thank you so much. Sincerely appreciate it. To subscribe on t.me slash Dana Okay. Uh, next question. Do you think we should strive to kill off bad bacteria, parasites, viruses, or rather supplement good bacteria and work on the metabolism? Uh, so... Uh, in Broda Barnes's book, The... Hypothyroidism, the unsuspected illness. He says, chronic or recurrent of, uh, infection of one kind or another has to be the story of my life for many patients with thyroid deficiency. I have seen many children who suffered from repeated colds followed by complications such as tonsillitis, sinusitis, ear and mastoid infections who needed repeated antibiotic treatment and went right on getting new infections until their hypothyroidism was treated. And then I think the same thing could be true for a, a low vitamin D level. I think it could be such a drain on the system that a person would be susceptible to all types of things. And uh, so, yeah, and the, then a person could do that while trying to suppress the like the types of gram negative bacteria in the intestine producing endotoxins. So so getting the metabolic rate up, obtaining full nutrition, then trying to solve things that are happening in the intestine. And that's not to say all of those are their own thing. They all relate to each other. But um, I think those are the main types of things. And trying to like it, help the intestine function are things like the carrot salad or the uh, well-cooked white button mushrooms or penicillin VK or erythromycin or uh, tetracycline or megasporbiotic or biosporin or bacteriophage. There's lots of different ways to do it, I think. Have you tried androsterone from Idea Labs? Any thoughts on the hormone? I know very little about it. I have never tried it. Uh, is it possible to take calcium through the skin as a supplement? I've tried every brand of milk where I live. I also tried crushed uh, eggshell powder and calcium supplements. They all give me digestive issues. Um, the only other thing I can think of is like well-cooked spinach and kale. And I ran out of my vitamin K supplement when I was in Malaysia. And so I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and start eating uh, well-cooked kale. And I hated it. <laughs> it was disgusting. I don't know how people do that. Uh, and even with like tons of butter on it and stuff, it was like, uh, it was terrible. So, but those are good sources of calcium. And I think the, uh, the other option, I, I'm a little bit blurry on this, but I think if you boil the leaves for like, what is it like a minute or five minutes or something, most of the calcium is in the water. And so, uh, maybe I just look up the, uh, quote, right. Um, kale. Ray has quotes about it. I'm sure I've saved them here or there. Oh, these are for magnesium, but I think the same is true for calcium. Okay. I think if you want really intense source, you can boil leaves like kale or beet greens or something for just two or three minutes. And the green water that comes out quickly is very concentrated in magnesium and calcium. That's a pretty, uh, that's a very pretty sa uh, safe supplement. So that, that's the only alternative I know of. Um, and I wish I knew that when I was in Malaysia. I had no reason not to know that when I was in Malaysia. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me keep this up. Uh, okay, thoughts on dry skin. In my limited experience, that's like thyroid. Uh, um, I think it can mean that estrogen is high. Vitamin D has an effect on it. Um, I think the sebaceous glands are, I think estrogen can like overdrive the sebaceous glands and then eventually cause them to atrophy, losing the natural oils in the skin and causing it to also atrophy. Um, but yeah. Okay. What is the hype of progesterone? Any uses or fixes when supplementing it? So when, in like 2013, I would use progest and it would like neutralize my libido. And so I was really worried about using it. And then much later in 2018, I was flying to the Philippines and I had just gotten wind of organophosphates on airplanes. And I was like, well, those sound really toxic. And I wrote to Ray and I was like, what's the best thing to protect against organophosphates? And he mentioned that uh, progesterone was good. And uh, so here's for progesterone for organophosphate poisoning. And anyway, so I bought a bottle of Progest-E and took like half of it on the 22-hour plane ride there. 
And I got off the plane and felt like great. And usually I have to recover for like three days on like a 20 hour plane ride. And it also didn't affect my libido in any kind of negative way. And so I was like, okay, maybe I should give this a shot again. And so I eventually started mixing it with uh, DHEA and just using it before bed. Um, but anyways, uh, I don't have the... This is kind of the useful graphic. Anyways, thyroid, LDL cholesterol, vitamin A uh, in the mitochondria are pr produce pregnenolone, progesterone, and DHEA. And then thyroid is the cofactor for uh, to stimulate the use of glucose and oxygen to make ATP, CO2, and water. And then the thyroid and the DHEA is like kind of the precursor to, to, to testosterone and DHT. But I, Ray's, a lot of Ray's work focuses on progesterone as like a way to inhibit the activation of the stress system. So like progesterone opposes like CRH or what is it? Cortico, uh, corticotropin release hormone, I think, which, which activates ACTH, which activates the adrenals and the pituitary hormones are harmful and the adrenal hormones in excess are harmful. And so this is like a, the, these steroids are helping to like quiet or dampen the stress systems. And so when the thyroid gets interfered with, uh, or there's not enough vitamin A, or a person isn't producing enough cholesterol, like this whole thing gets interfered with, and then a person has to ramp up their stress systems, I think. So, uh, so again, progesterone being this powerful anti-stress uh, steroid that can be supplemented safely in women and in, in men. So I think that's the main idea. Okay. How to protect yourself? What do with your money in case of anticipated cyber attacks on banks? Um, so on the last episode, Ray talked about silver. So I might try to get a hold of some of that. It makes sense to me in, in rural Mexico, um, especially like pay my landlord. You know, if my accounts got frozen or something, at least I could have maybe a year or two of... Um, silver coins or something to pay him. I don't know. The Bitcoin stuff, <laughs> I was convinced for a long time it was a CIA NSA thing. If you have evidence for it, for that assertion or that idea, please post it below. I've seen nothing compelling on it whatsoever, uh, but I know a lot of people say that. And um, so, so again, I don't know. I don't know. I'm an economic idiot. So I don't, nobody should be taking financial advice from me. But uh, those are the only two things I've been interested in, but I really have no idea. And we're talking about forever. We're not talking about a year getting by a year or two or something. So it'll be really interesting what takes shape here. Uh, signs and effects to know if certain T3 supplement is actually working. Thank you. So um, it can be a lot of different things, but um, so... T3 uh, can relieve cr uh, fatigue, dry hair, dry skin, irritability, emotional instability, um, so uh, somnolence, lethargy, infertility, dysmenorrhea, me uh, menstrual irregularity, sensitivity to cold, joint and muscle aches and stiffness, obesity, irritability, emotional instability, constipation. I mean, that, that's why hypothyroidism is so interesting because it can manifest into such a diversity of uh, presentation. However, the disorder, other presentations that are less frequently recognized, these other manifest manifestations, though not seen often, are not uncommon. Hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism is an easily treated, frequent disease that can be misdiagnosed for years before coming apparent. Although its symptoms are usually readily reversible, treatment, lack of recognition, its rare signs and symptoms can lead to unnecessary morbidity. Um, awareness of the diversity of presentation uh, is important. And so... Um, so this is an old Merck manual that talks about the symptoms as well. I've linked this a thousand times. Um, but you can pause the screen and read that if you want. But the easiest way is the temperature and pulse. And so being really familiar with those before you take it, after you take it, what it's like in the morning, what it's like in the afternoon, those are all really important. Uh, what What's the implications of hearing your own heartbeat while laying down on a pillow at night? Thank you. I've noticed just real like I've noticed that every single time I was on like the right thyroid dose. And so that that's not something I shoot for, <laughs> you know, like it's like, oh, I can't hear my heart rate. I should take more. But that that seems to be uh, in the zone of taking enough. Um, but but it's something it's something I notice after the fact. What blood tests are the most important for tracking improvements in a pro metabolic approach to optimal health? Um, 
I think some of the most important tests, uh, TSH, total cholesterol, prolactin, the vitamin D, uh, what is it, the 25-OH one, not the calcitriol test, not the 125-D, um, the parathyroid hormone, or, or PTH, uh, you could get the reverse T3, but sometimes it's very expensive. And what else? You could get the serum phosphorus is kind of useful. And and then the pulse and temperature. The, the I, I think you can honestly figure out most things with these tests. Um, again, they're, they're, I mean, tr I'm sure Georgie would add like 10, 20 extra ones to this. But I think this is a bare bones list of tests that you could get that would be very, very helpful. And they they back each other up. For example, if your prolactin was like three or four or something, but your parathyroid hormone was 60, you could probably safe, safely assume at other times of the day your prolactin was much higher. Um, the total cholesterol is a very good thyroid test. I think when the cholesterol is higher and the person has a lower pulse and temperature, it's a pretty good indication of lower thyroid function. The reverse T3 can be an indication of cortisol because I think that activates the deiodinase enzymes that turn thyroxin into reverse T3. Um, just, just they're very good. Like uh, I feel like I'm forgetting one, but I, I, I'm almost sure that's the. Those are the really good tests. Okay. Additionally, what list? Oh, this same, same question. And what are you? Uh, why are you as confident that Mexico is the place to be for the time we are in? I'm not confident. So I've referenced this like a hundred times. Uh, this was a phone call set up by somebody who was not me. And they were asking Ray about Mexico. And Ray was saying that Mexico has a impenetrable spirit and would make it through the whole great reset type of stuff. Uh, and it would just retain its kind of personhood through that process. And, and we were like, right, what happens if AMLO gets killed? And he, and he was like, oh, another AMLO would replace him. And so many people have asked me to, to edit this and release it. And I don't even know where it is. I need, like, I need to find the file. Um, and also I need to make time. To be honest, I'm extraordinarily busy right now. Uh, and I just need to find time to do it. And so again, I'm not confident in really anything these days. But I think it's all about hedging. Uh, and the thing I'm not confident in is I think... I think the U.S. is not going to look very pretty in a, maybe a year or two or something. And then the other, uh, Australia is like done for. Parts of Europe are even more uh, kind of ahead of, of Canada. Uh, and so, again, again, I think the U.S. is next. And again, if Ray is right about them re releasing some Marburg thing, the wheels will come off. You know, Especially if people are bleeding through their eyes. People are going to go apeshit. You know, like it, it's... Uh, It'll be, it'll be insane. So again, I feel pretty confident here. The, the one of the, one of the, but I wouldn't tell somebody else they should be confident because I, because I am, you know, but one of the things that is very true is the, like a lot of places I go do not accept credit cards, you know? And, and, and so the idea that we're going to have some digital ID with a digital um, peso, which I know they said in 2024, they were going to do that, but maybe that would inspire me to go somewhere else. And I used to think like that when I lived in the city, but now, I, I mean, I don't know what I do, but I, it's hard to think that uh, as long as a landlord didn't get sick of me and kick me out or something that I'd leave here because I'm just having time of my life and I really like it here. Well, I mean, we'll see, you know, I got to be flexible with this crazy stuff that's happening. Have you ever tried doxycycline? I just did a round of it and don't feel any better. Do you think this means antibiotics won't be helpful for me? Or perhaps it's just doxy not being the right uh, one for my issues, nasal congestion, fatigue. Um, well, just general thyroid can be uh, responsible for that stuffed up feeling. These studies suggest that patients who are deficient in thyroid hormone and in whom nasal obstruction and headache are prominent symptoms may tend to nasal infection and nasal allergy. And I think like sinusitis and... I thought I had a vitamin D paper talking about. Maybe not. Oh, I could look, but whatever. Uh, so this would be a situation maybe getting labs would be useful. Uh, usually people that really benefit from antibiotics have chronic diarrhea 
or gas or like a mixture of both or are really sensitive to a lot of different foods. And so if that wasn't the case here, if it was more constipation, uh, did he, he mention that? Um, no. Uh, and if more constipation and low temperature, low pulse rate, like this person might just need to investigate thyroid, vitamin D. Um, yeah. Okay. Curious what you do in a situation where NDT was being taken away for many months and symptoms have improved, uh, taken for many months and symptoms have improved. Heart rate is around 80 BPM and core temperature is 98-ish. Yet T4 and T3 in the labs were outside the range of what identified as healthy. Sometimes it can happen when somebody's taking too much at one time. But in general, I think those T4, like total T4 and total T3 and revert, um, free T3 and free T4 are completely useless. So I don't pay any attention to them. Um, but y you could get that the, those tests high by taking too much at one time. So maybe like spreading out the dose if that was happening. So I would need more information on this one too. Uh, but I appreciate the question. Um, best ways to improve temperature. Since everybody has to eat, that's a good starting place. Uh, things like sugars and gelatin and salt and calcium and things like that. And using some kind of intestinal disinfectant. Uh, I went from sad diet to keto, then carnivore back to keto. I still haven't found salvation. I, I like not having to eat. I do. Uh, how do I transition to the Ray Peat approach? I'm very uh, complaining. Thanks. Um, maybe a good way to do this would be like putting in your food to like chronometer.com or something like that. And then seeing the calcium to phosphorus ratio of that, which I'm sure would be very high in phosphorus. And maybe including more calcium containing foods like cheese or uh, milk to get the calcium up. And maybe just starting it very low and slow. Um, the not having to eat thing, I, like I used to promote that a long time ago, but I, when Ray was talking about mimicking the metabolism of a child, I realized how bizarre it was that like people thought like ha not having an appetite was a good thing because I knew at least when I was a kid, I woke up and I could not wait to eat. And I wasn't even like a, I wasn't a healthy kid. <laughs> um, but Hans Selye, uh, I think he, oh, here we go. That was a lucky one. Um, loss of appetite. Uh, okay, so the gastrointestinal tract is particularly sensitive to general stress. Loss of appetite is one of the first symptoms in the great syndrome of just being sick. And this may be accompanied by vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. So, According to the person that mapped out the stress response, <laughs> loss of appetite, not necessarily a great thing. Uh, but again, evaluating your own situation, taking your temperature and pulse, trying to figure out where you are, because if you don't know where you are, you can't know where you're going. So that's, um, that's a good way to try to do it. Okay, where, how do you procure good food in Mex Mexico? It's pretty easy, except I've been having a ragingly difficult time getting good oranges the last like six months. And so that's a big problem of mine, <laughs> but it's not very difficult. Hey, Danny, it would be cool. How long have we been going here? Let's check this. Okay. 48 minutes. Uh, hey, Danny, it would be cool to hear more about your life in Mexico. What are some of the obstacles you first faced in relocating and how is it now? How do you feel being there has impacted your health? Hope all is well, my friend. Um, yeah, it was a super scary thing to come here and, uh, it was like a big gamble. So I was living in San Francisco, but prices were going up. The election was happening in 2016. All, everybody I knew was going psycho. Uh, Ray had always talked about Mexico. And I did feel a sense of like obligation because I criticized the U.S. to leave, to leave and live somewhere else. And, and also I was like, well, I don't aspire to make more money. You know, I'm comfortable with how much I make, but you should go somewhere where your finances and like cost of living uh, like are more suitable for each other. Cause I think at that time I was looking at a studio in San Francisco for like $3,000 a month. So that would have been like, at the time it would have been like my paycheck for this studio and like buying food on debt or something. It just been, it would have been so dumb. So, but it, it, it was one of the best things I ever did. I, I, I this is really lame, but on like a Yahoo forum, there was like, uh, somebody had written jump and the net will appear. And that was really my, uh, my like motto for, for coming here. And it was a great learning experience. And then 
And after living in Mexico and then like living in parts of Asia and stuff, like things, things didn't seem as difficult that I used to think were like extremely difficult. Like uh, during the early parts of coronavirus, uh, like I lived with my girlfriend in a one room place for like six months and we had no way to cook anything. And then we had a, a mini fridge and like, I just made it work, you know? Uh, and that was not necessarily fun, but I, I, I had like lived in Japan with super small fridges and stuff. And it wasn't like the craziest thing to me. And so putting, putting myself in like not the greatest situations by going out of my comfort zone, I think made me more robust, you know? Um, but it had some legitimate downtime and things that weren't great as well. Like the language barrier thing, because I, my Spanish is still terrible. That was not a, not an easy thing. It took me a ridiculously long time just to learn like super basic Spanish. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but given the situation that's happening right now, I'm very glad to not be there and have the opportunity to, to leave a while ago because who knows if somebody tries to get like a temporary visa here, I don't even know what the story is right now. Okay. What's a day in the life of Danny Raddy? <laughs> very boring. <laughs> I think I wake up around, uh, seven thirty ish, which is not super ideal. That's a little bit too early for me. And then I have my first call at nine and I do that because having early calls and then later calls like suit more people around the world. And so it's like not like I'd be cutting off a huge group of people if I only wanted to have uh, calls at a certain later point in the morning. Um, so I'll eat, I'll eat breakfast, uh, t- take three or four calls in the morning uh, usually go lay outside in the sun at like 2 p.m. And <laughs> I'm really boring. Uh, they'd have a, a, one or two more calls, depending on the schedule. And <laughs> really not do anything. <laughs> I'm extremely boring. Uh, and then answer email throughout the day. And and then so so today, it was kind of a day off, even though, even though I did have calls today. And, and so I went into town. I went to, there's like an organic shop. And there's a girl I always talk to there named Arjan. And we just, I just ca- caught up with her because I hadn't seen her for like a month. And that that's like, uh, I think there's a question here about like being alone. I, I do talk people's ear off when I see them, you know, and then the, the landlord is coming back here and there's a guy that works on this property and I talk to him all the time. And um, yeah, it's very simple, but I'm hoping to get more projects in when the landlord comes back. I want to build a chicken coop. I want to get some kind of form of transportation so I can do orange trees and things like that. Um, but right now I'm a little bit like uh, waiting to, to get to do something because I don't have a form of transportation and I'm like dependent on taxis or my buddy here that sometimes drives me into town. But um, but given that I am hobbled in that way, I feel like I've I've gotten lots of stuff from the post office and brought it here and stuff. So I'm just again, I'm just like preparing for this um, some kind of the life to get worse in the future. <laughs> like I've said a hundred times. <laughs> okay. I was surprised to hear you watch MMA. I was surprised many of the Bitcoiners I follow also watch MMA. There seems to be a lot of crossover between Bitcoiners, people who prefer not to outsource their health and MMA. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts on this. Um, so I did Muay Thai in Thailand. That's like one way to get a long, long-term or like a short-term visa there. And so like the, the dude, my teacher dude was like teaching me, basic technique. And then I go watch like videos on YouTube about it. And I think that like doing that exposed me to more MMA stuff. And I just like gained this <laughs> really big appreciation for it, even though it's obviously not a healthy thing to do. Um, and like you get punched in the head, you know, uh, and obviously it serves the military industrial complex to some degree, you know, and so I'm perfectly aware of that. But I am in awe of the skill of these people having done it myself and just, I never got, we never sparred, you know, I would never want to do that. But just the, I mean, the workouts were difficult enough without being punched. I can't even imagine being punched in the face or something while, while trying to keep everything together. And so I used to think MMA was like two people go in a cage and try to kill each other. It's really, that's not really what it is. And so I think there's lots of skill and it, recognizing that skill is the thing that I had no idea about. So again, I'm not, I'm not like promoting MMA. I'm not saying you should watch it, but the last thing I'll say about it is, uh, so my like hobbies were usually watching conspiracy stuff or watching nutrition stuff. And the fact that I have something to consume now 
that has nothing to do with those things is really useful because I don't want to watch nutrition stuff all the time. I don't want to watch conspiracy stuff all the time. And so having this third thing that is not those is really useful for me. And, may, <laughs> and watching the cards on the weekend is something to do when my life is like, uh, again, I'm not complaining about it. It's, it's, it's not the most novel thing on the planet. You know, it's uh, so anything to break up weeks and stuff can be very useful. Okay. So this gets into this question. You have lived work solo for quite a while. How do you cope with the stress of loneliness? I find that when I am on my own for more than a day or two, uh, offline interacting, laughing with people I like, I don't feel mentally well. Inspiring company is very, isn't. I completely agree. I'm not saying this is optimal. I would love a companionship here. Again, that is just not my priority. I lived with my girl, ex-girlfriend in Thailand for over a year, <laughs> like, like close quarters, you know, we really got to know each other. <laughs> uh, and so it's, uh, yeah, I've experienced those things. Again, my life is not about that. But again, I talk people's ear off. I'm always looking to communicate with people and make new friends and things like that. But it's just um, like, I'll, I'll take what I can get right now, but it's not, it's not my main priority. And also I'm somebody who can spend a ridiculous amount of time with myself and entertain myself. And I, um, I, don't, I don't need like constant stimulation from other people to feel well. But again, there are, there's even a point for me, which is like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I need contact soon. Okay. What? Let's check the time here. Okay. 56. Okay. What is the air quality and pollution line line in Mexico generally for health? Uh, I don't know like the, what is it? PM or whatever. I mean, it's the worst ever in Bangkok. The one thing about Mexico is the streets are real small. And sometimes a car will go by. You just blow a bunch of exhaust in your face. So that happens a lot. Um, but I, I don't know the exact uh, quality of air here. Mexico City is awful. It, it feels like thick air. This is extremely polluted. It, I think it's better where I am, like, a, uh, I don't know how many kilometers outside of town. When will you procure a Mexican life? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what supplies are you making sure to have in stock for the impending class society? So ways to filter water, um, power, uh, so since I asked for these questions, my power has gone out like three or four times. And that's just a stark reality. Not only that I use a lot of power, uh, like the, through the microwave and these 250 watt lights and things, but also if those, if you didn't have access to power, it would be so brutal. <laughs> it's like a day of no power is hard to make it through. And so, and so again, I, I'm going through different phases of solar systems, like consumer units. Now I'm looking at like lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries and making my own system or whatever, but it's really expensive and I've already spent a grip of money on it. So I probably should stop. <laughs> but um, okay, so solar stuff to make your own power. Um, uh, what did I say? Water, food as much as you possibly could. Just, I'm not saying that will last you forever, but if there was a run on items in the, the grocery stores, like at some places there already is, that would just protect you from things like that. Like staples that you get all the time, like salt and sugar and maybe powdered milk and like oat bran. Oh, the oat bran thing was completely motivated because I want to stockpile that stuff, you know, um, maybe white rice, like Lundberg organic uh, uh, California basmati rice, I think has low arsenic in it. Um Probably a lot of things I'm forgetting, you know, but, uh, yeah, those are the, those are the main things. And then maybe a, again, some kind of hedge against inflation, whatever a person thinks is a good idea. Thoughts on getting good results from Tyro mix. Have you tried the higher ratio? Yeah, I take a, at the moment I take a one to two of T3 to T4 of Sinoplus and Sinomel, but I've never tried Tyro mix before. Advice for balancing thyroid hormone and retinol supplementation. How much do you tend to need? So uh, it should be noted that if a person is having a very low temperature and pulse rate, a low temperature and pulse rate, they might not need that much vitamin A. Uh, so in experimental or clinical conditions associated with an increase in the amount of thyroid hormone, as for instance, in thyroid toxicosis, there's a simultaneously an increased need for vitamin A. Conversely, thyroid ectomized animals apparently need less vitamin A than normal animals. So in some respects, the action of vitamin A and the thyroid hormone are mutually antagonistic. If vitamin A and thyroid substance are administered simultaneously, the ability of the thyroid hormone to raise the basal metabolic rate is marked uh, decrease. So I, 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 
I think thyroid and vitamin A are very similar. They ride around on pre-albumin, or I can never say it right, trans, transethetin, uh, tr I, I forgot what it was. Anyways, so if a person, their metabolic rate is not very high, let's go back to that graphic. So if their metabolic rate isn't very high, they're not going to turn over cholesterol and vitamin A into the steroids. And so uh, vitamin A isn't going to usually be the thing that's lacking. I think it's going to be thyroid. And then at a certain point when a st person starts taking thyroid and taking vitamin D and laying out in the sun and eating sugar and salt and things and calcium, they'll probably start needing more vitamin A at some a certain point. And I don't have a paper to show you that that's true. It's just my own experience. And so then that's where liver is just the ultimate vitamin A food. And then eating an egg every day is like a supplement. Uh, and like a pastured egg might have like 800 IU or something of vitamin A. And so, but if a person has a low temperature and a low pulse rate, eating a lot of vitamin A might lower their temperature and pulse even more. But what I'm trying to say is I don't, I, the retinol supplementation, I don't know if I just like jump into that. Uh, I, I, I think the focusing on the thyroid hormone might be an easier way. And then if a person um, had some symptom of a vitamin A deficiency while taking thyroid, maybe just eating liver. Okay. Uh, it would be great to know or having insights on are cyber tests worth doing are accurate or better to go by symptoms. I've always gone by symptoms. I don't, I don't know for a fact if the, the cyber tests are accurate or not. I don't know why I put this one in here because I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what video editing, oh, this one, let's go over symptoms real fast. So according to this paper, uh, although asymptomatic cases exist, SIBO is clinically characterized by signs of symptoms such as abdominal pain, bloating, flatulence, flat, flatulence diarrhea, and weight loss. I mean... If a person is experiencing that often and they have changed the kind of food they eat and things like that, and their vitamin D level is about 50 nanograms per milliliter, then you might want to start thinking about taking the antibody. Uh, what video editing program camera do you use? It's an A6400. Uh, and the editing program, I use OBS for the live streams with an ATEM extreme unit. That's like the brains of the whole live stream setup. That allows to put like overlays and put um, the computer's monitor up on the screen. It's like running everything. And then I have a kind of a complicated setup that I'm using um, OBS to record and then to stream. So like the, this is like very confusing. <laughs> but the, so the ATM is like doing a lot of the legwork and then I'm broadcasting it to the OBS through as like a, a webcam. And so, uh, yeah, it's a little bit confusing, but and then then I have a monitor over here, and then I have a mix pre three for sound and yeah, man, it's like a dream setup. I, I I don't even know what I'd add to this to make it better, but do you remember the Q and A we did a while ago to raise money? It was for the ATM Extreme and so, and some cables and things like that. And the ATM Extreme was like a grand just alone, uh, but I really think it added some stability to the the pot the podcast because. Before, my computer had to do all the heavy lifting instead of the ATM, ATEM, and that was a nightmare. What is your theology? Theology? I really don't, don't have one. Um, or do I, do I have one? What, does, what is the exact definition? I think that means... Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't have one. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, when will there be more memberships available on your Patreon? They've been sold out for a while. I keep checking every week or so, but no luck. So the one-to-one -one, uh, like Zoom stuff opens up towards the end of the month because people always in, uh, invariably, invariably stop at some point, which is great. Um, but the email stuff hasn't been open for a long time because I, I, I have had such a hard time answering my email for the last year or so. So I, I don't know when I'll open those up again just because I, I'm like a one-man show. <laughs> everything, everything I do is just me. I'm not sending, sending things out for people to do things for me. And uh, so it's just uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm not complaining, but it is a lot to do for me, which is I, I like it that way. We already talked about a day in my life and – 
I have tried the raw carrot salad with olive oil and apple, apple cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar for a few months and got constant, uh, constant constipation. Stopped it and normal processes resumed. What could have caused this? I have Hashimoto's on T4. I eat pretty much similar to the bioinjury guidelines. So one, I don't know if this person knows this, but I don't think it's ever appropriate just to take T4. That's like dangerous uh, because it burdens the liver to convert this into T3. And so this person should try to read about that or try to talk to a doctor that prescribes both T3 and T4 because that can make a person feel really terrible at some point. Um, and I try to, so apple cider vinegar, I think, I think you want white distilled vinegar, like uh, maybe Heinz. And distilled vinegar is like one of the adulterated foods. And so maybe trying to, I, I think Heinz is okay, but in, where I am, they add like um, sulf, sulfites to it and stuff, which can, I think, be very allergenic. So being careful about what vinegar used and definitely not apple cider vinegar, because I think the mother of apple cider vinegar is like a fungus. And um, so I'd have to know more about this situation. Stop to end processes, resume. Um, yeah, I'd be... I, ask this person like 10 other questions okay I, I can't believe that was it that was crazy okay guys sincerely appreciate it subscribe to t.me slash danny roddy uh if you want danny roddy dot uh, dot com <laughs> danny roddy dot substack dot com uh again we have an amazing audience sincerely appreciate it L live streams at 77 episodes that's crazy uh having a blast watching the world burn down awful horrifying but um, again, the the podcast being my anchor, I don't even know what I'd do without them. Uh, Ray joining us, just total dream come true, just uh, completely fantastic. So, guys, have a safe weekend. I don't know when I'll po post this, maybe Friday or even tomorrow. I have no no clue. But have a safe week. Talk to you guys soon. Georgie will be back on the fourteenth, I think it was, and I'm sure we'll have a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> okay, bye everyone. Take care. Appreciate it. Be safe. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out. Bye.